I'm a bit underexposed, but this should be fine. I found a nice pair of speakers on a flea market near me, but there was a small problem. I didn't have a power adapter that supported the voltage of the speakers in order to test them. And I didn't really want to wait a few days to get one. Automatically, I had to find a solution in order to test the speakers to make sure that they work. So here comes the device that most likely you clicked the video for. This is an LM2596S, which is a step down switching regulator. But quickly and briefly, what does that even mean? It allows you to power the regulator with a power brick that has a higher voltage, and then the regulator steps down that voltage, in some situations also the current, so you don't fry your device. Now let's switch to the bench, in my case this tiny table from IKEA, to show you quickly how it works. I'm hoping you can see my tiny IKEA table and that the frame is centered somewhat. In order to power on the step-down converter, I had in the house a DC 24 volt standard uh, power supply and I needed to output a maximum current of 1 amp just for testing purposes and a voltage of 17.5. So how did I do that? Well, on the board that has these dimensions by the way 23 millimeters by 48 ish and there are different variations of this uh, step down converter this one has three potentiometers because it's a constant current and constant voltage one what that means it's allowing you to set the current and also set the voltage of the of the output and this middle one, this middle potentiometer, allows you to set a current limit to cut off the charging for your battery packs. But now I'm gonna strictly talk about the current limit and the voltage limit of this device to see how I improvised quotation marks required this power supply in order to test the speaker. Okay, but how did I set the current and the voltage limit to test my speakers? Well, it's really simple. The only thing you need, besides time, it's a multimeter. You need to set your multimeter to direct current and you do that by changing it to where you see this sign on your multimeter. Let me put that in frame, this sign. Make sure that you select the correct voltage range. My power supply is 24 volts, so I need to select the 200 from here. Here is my power supply, 24.9. And now let's measure the output. I'm guessing I can leave it like that. And the output right now for me is 15.6.7. And in order to adjust, I will do it in parts because I am having both of my hands occupied. So with a tiny screwdriver, you turn this knob on the potentiometer clockwise. And you will notice that the voltage is increasing. So I need a little bit more voltage. We are spot on exactly what I needed. Now to set the amperage you need to take off the red lead from the voltage and set it to the fused amperage circuit then move your multimeter to measure direct current amperage in my case I've set it to the 10 amp mark I'm hoping that it's in the frame. And now what you should do, let me put the screwdriver aside, is measure the output voltage. You will see that some LEDs will start to flash on the board and make 
strange sound also because you're shorting the circuit and that's how you set the amperage uh, limit on the output mine as of now is set to 1.1 I guess that's fine for me the speakers will power them on just fine and now let's test the speakers to see if they power on something just flashed right there but as you can see the light turned on on the speaker and now they should work in theory let me grab a cable and test them so as you can hear it's working I won't put the volume that high because this speaker is rated for 4 amps and I don't want to damage neither the device or the speaker so I'm gonna limit the volume but it works okay but now what are the downsides of such a device this device is really good if you want to power like solar power things and regulate the voltage and amperage LEDs and other electronic components but being a switching power supply meaning that it's a bit noisy it will introduce some unwanted interference in some situations so it's not really suited for medical equipment nor for hi-fi audio devices or even communication devices but for hobby projects even non-sensitive electronics this is just fine and also did i mention that this board cost me like two euros something like that shipped i hope you enjoyed this video i don't know how is the weather in your country but in romania it's scorching hot i'm sweating right now if you enjoyed the video leave it a like subscribe if you want to see more content like this in english and don't forget to buy a bunch of these regulators for your projects because they are really cool